at this point of time there is only 25% to to 30% of adoption of infrastructure as code there are still a lot of companies who still haven't moved towards infra as code because of the learning curve behind it because when you think about it a person has to understand the cloud basics or the infrastructure mm-hmm. basics and then yeah. learn a declarative language before going towards something like infra as code so that's where my question to you adil comes into play where in how does a person learn and understand something like terraform what what are the best resources out there so uh, so so the learning curves depend on a person that uh, for me uh, when people ask me and i just said you just really need the internet for the resources like we have udemy we have github and uh, we have a lot of resources like in, if you uh, want, don't want to spend the money on the resources like we just have a cloud guru we have uh, these are the premium resources and they just provide a lot of a lot of the good content but if you don't have a money and you want to start learning uh, terraform something but i really recommend people youtube uh, which is actually the really good resource to get started and i think free uh, uh, free code camp uh, is really really doing awesome job in when it's come to devops and uh, they just provide free resources for aws they provide resources for devops for infrastructure as code well. they have complete playlist like three or two eight or they just have videos so i think these can be essential when it's come to learning uh, and it's really dependent on the person like uh, if you want to spend the money then he can just go for the premium resources but uh, it's really depend on the person that what he want to pursue amazing amazing and for cloud formation i would always say that you know the documentation is pretty amazing i mean i have never seen something that's uh, very clear because i uh, i can yeah. Uh, uh, relate to it and it's synonymous that until and unless you know each and every parameter of the template that mm-hmm. you're creating that actually doesn't uh, i mean you don't have the necessity to go to the cloud based platform and start clicking through stuff and all that because you know the right parameters you know what is possible and what is not possible and i believe that cloud formation docs itself is one of the best resources out there but other than that any other person who would love to l- learn cloud formation uh, from scratch is practice you start writing your own templates just by referring the cloud formation docs they have an amazing github repository with some really nice examples under the aws labs uh, repository so that's i believe the best way to learn something like cloud formation uh, for you for terraform uh, what would be the direct resources that you would go for so when when i started learning i created i create myself a roadmap first i need to be learn the basics of cloud if i d- does not know about the cloud about the cloud models how can i supposed to be learn infrastructure as code well? first i need to be have a command on aws or azure it's depend is is depend to you like if you want to be azure engineer aws engineer it's really depend on you so first you need to be have a command on cloud models like how's they are working and uh, after this you can go for uh, Uh, if you really want to learn about the infrastructure as for well, just go for uh, their learning like how automation work declarative languages how declarative languages work how their stack are working uh, there are actually a lot of good content but uh, books are really recommended recommend but if you want to be learn the concept in more depth because books have a lot of in depth uh, concept but and videos are just you know uh, very on point they just want to but in infrastructure as for well, yeah they just explain you it's just for the automation with the help of this you can automate your infrastructure so on but when it's come to books they just give you more in depth like as you just talk about in immutable they they are really in depth in books we talk about declarative languages declarative models about the or stack oriented how stack oriented is working and uh, then infrastructure as for well, how they are working with kubernetes and so, on. so i really recommend go through with some books and then go for if you are now finally you are uh, infrastructure as code you know infrastructure core how it's working you can go for the cloud formation and terraform but now there is some language gap in terraform we follow hashi corporation language which is actually a very easy and readable uh, and in the ter- cloud formation we follow json or yaml they are also very human readable so now uh, how we can just uh, uh, make ourselves what we need what we need to be go for like we go for terraform or for cloud formation how about how about you what will you oh, suggest yeah. 
Oh, I, I would I would probably suggest a person like you mentioned to understand a cloud-based platform. At least let's put it in perspective that they need to understand how a, a solutions architect associate related of content of services work because that gives them at least knowledge of 2025 services. And then they can think about the automation behind creating all these resources onto a platform. Then, of course, learning something like YAML or JSON is really nice. And even uh, learning something like Python or Go for probably going ahead and you know parsing those JSON as well as filtering out some necessary values and the functional programming aspects of understanding a for loop and if condition and so on. And when they learn that together with the declarative aspects of it, then when they move on to something like Terraform, which is HashiCorp configuration language, uh, where you know dynamic and for each blocks are the most powerful aspects. So rather than repeating my resources, doing something like that. But for that, I need to understand what a for loop is all about. I need to understand how they have implemented uh, the uh, conditions in the background. right? So all these things for me to understand is that's where that gap is, which we have discussed right now, is to understand a functional programming along with something like a declarative language. And then moving towards infra as code, because when you think about it, you know, Pulumi is something that's more synonymous with developers, because you can write your infra as code with uh, Java programming or .NET or probably using TypeScript and so on, right? So that is more synonymous with developers, but we can't expect everyone in the industry to think as developers. There are so many system administrators, Linux administrators, yeah. network administrators who have a grip of probably Python, uh, but not something like core Java or probably the .NET framework and so on. For them, CloudFormation and Terraform are the best uh, tools that they could probably go ahead and learn. So since we have knocked it out that this is how you start your career in terms of infra code and you learn it, let's move on to some other uh, technical concepts in terms of Terraform. What do you think are uh, the two major aspects that someone should concentrate while they start their journey with Terraform? Uh, so uh, for me, uh, what is more important than cloud formation, Terraform manage multiple cloud is you can easily manage a Terraform and multi-cloud like you have a, some servers on Google Cloud, Microsoft, and also on it. AWS, so you just write some configuration files. In the files, you just have some declarative like Hashi Corporation. In the file, you just said like, I just need some uh, two servers, three servers, two servers on AWS, three servers on Azure, and some five servers on Google Cloud. And you want to change any type, you can easily done with the help of time. So how about CloudFormation? Can we do this with CloudFormation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a very tricky question. You know, yeah, there are some <laughs> things that people wouldn't have explored, right? So since I have explored it, I can tell you that it is possible with CloudFormation to create something like a GCS a bucket, right? Google Cloud Storage buckets. But then we will have to go ahead and use something from the CloudFormation registry, something which is like TF, double colon, double colon, GCS, colon, colon, bucket, right? So we are going to use something like a third party provider kind of, uh, which is registered in the CloudFormation registry, provided necessary credentials for it to talk to Google Cloud to your respective account, to that respective project in order to create it through CloudFormation. So it's a workaround. It's a little tricky, but it's possible. So you will still be Can able to create it? resources. Can we do it using Lambda? <laughs> we can do it using Lambda, but it's not that everyone <laughs> uh, will start writing code in Python or Node.js. You know, it's uh, not everyone so is a functional that, programmer. It's so. mean that it's really tricky. We can, but it's really tricky. Uh, yeah, but yeah. there's a way. It, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. 